I was left with a cliffhanger and a broken heart. everybody it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my December wrap-up 2021 part 2 I read a total of 15 books there are three more days of December left so that may go up but we're only gonna be talking about 15 books here for this month I split this wrap-up into three different parts so like I said this is part two if you're interested in the other two parts they will be linked down below once they are uploaded so without further ado let us get started the first book that I have to talk about for this part of the wrap-up is the second book in the prison healer series I thought it was a duology it's not but it is the gilded cages I gave this a five out of five stars like I said this is is the second book in the series. It basically starts up right where The Prison Healer left off. I gave the first book a 5 out of 5 stars as well if you're wondering. I just love these characters so much. I was so excited to see them again. I really liked watching Kaiva battle with where her loyalty lies and deal with the decisions that she makes. I also still just want to protect Tip at all costs. He is my favorite character by far. I just think he is so precious. I also thoroughly enjoyed the introduction of some new characters like Ress, Torel, and Zulika. I found all three of them to be very intriguing and I was definitely invested in how they played into the story. I will say that the second book is definitely slower than the first book but I didn't feel that it lagged in any way. I really liked how there was a big focus on the political side of things in this one. It gave a much better understanding of life outside the prison that we didn't necessarily get in the first installment. The first book was so full of twists and turns that I did not see coming and the second book was the exact same way. I had my jaw on the floor at times. With what was happening in the story, I was not expecting a lot of what happened. I went into this book thinking it was a duology so I was fully prepared for a nice conclusion and like a happy ever after for these characters that I love and then I was left with a cliffhanger and a broken heart. I was shocked. I was put into a state of sorrow because I have to wait until June 2022 in order to find out what happens to my babies. I am very angry about it because like I said I thought this was a duology and all I'm left with is heartbreak. But this series is quickly becoming one of my favorites in 2021 so I mean I'll wait but I'm not happy about it. Next I have Reputation by Lex Croucher. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows Georgiana Ellers, who is left with her aunt and uncle for the summer while her parents travel abroad. While at a party, she meets Frances Campbell, who is of a much higher standing than she. Georgiana latches onto the friendship that is offered to her, as well as that higher standing that comes along with it, but she was not expecting the life of partying and a sin that she is introduced to. I listened to this on audiobook and I do think that the narrator did a great job with the overall vibe of the story but I honestly cannot say if I enjoyed it or not which is why I gave it the very average three star rating. At times I was fully invested in the story. I wanted to keep reading to find out what was going to happen next but then moments later I would be extremely bored and having to push myself to continue on with the story. It definitely dives into more dark and deeper topics than I originally thought it was going to. It goes into things such as drug and alcohol abuse, sexual assault, rape, and I definitely did not think that that was what I was getting myself into. Georgiana was a fun main character and I did enjoy her wit and humor and sarcasm but I was very annoyed with her at times and how easily she was drawn into Frances's mean girl spirit. It was interesting to see the dynamics of the friend group she was pulled into and I do definitely think that Frances was the more interesting character. I also wasn't the biggest fan of the romance which is a big aspect of this so that could also be why I gave it a pretty average rating but overall like it was a quick read but nothing super memorable in my opinion so three out of five stars. Next up I have The Grim Rose Girls by Laura Fole. I gave this a four out of five stars. This takes place at Grim Rose Academy, an elite boarding school where Yuri, Ella, and Rory are trying to deal and cope with 
with the death of their best friend and roommate Ari. Her death was deemed a suicide but the girls are not convinced that that's what's actually happened and upon the arrival of their new roommate Anani, the girls decide to find out what actually happened to Ari the night that she drowned. Then they find a mysterious book that may be the link between the girls and the mysterious ways that they are dying and the curse that started it all. This book had me hooked right away. I was so invested in trying to figure out which girls were linked to what fairy tale. I think that it was such a fun spin on the classic fairy tale retelling. I really liked how we got points of views from all four of these girls. I think that that really helped to flush these characters out and really get a sense of who they were. Almost every single character in this book was part of the LGBTQIA plus community, which we love to see. I think that the mystery was really fun. I was second guessing my theories constantly, which is always a great sign of a great thriller. If I have no idea what is going on and I'm not confident in what I think is happening, then I know that I'm going to love this book and I do think that it all came together really well in the end. Also, I'm just a big fan of boarding school settings, so I really love that aspect as well. I also had no idea that this was going to be a series going into it, so I am definitely intrigued to see where the story goes from here. I gave it 4 out of 5 stars. Next up is White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. This is another one I gave 4 out of 5 stars. This follows Mary Gold and her new blended family who are getting a second chance at life when their mother takes a job with the Sterling Foundation. This job comes along with a brand new house on Maple Street in a small midwestern town. Spooky things begin to happen inside the house and Mari's 10 year old stepsister Piper begins to talk about her new friend who definitely does not want Mari around and it's like the story of that. I listened to this on audiobook which I think definitely heightened my enjoyment of the story. I think that the narrator did such a great job with the creepiness of this book. At times you could really hear the anxiety that Mari was feeling in her voice. At times, Mari was definitely selfish and definitely rubbed me the wrong way, but she did grow on me as the story progressed. I like how this was more than just a haunted house story. It touched on much deeper topics like mental health, drug addiction, what that addiction can do to a family, gentrification, racism. It was interesting to learn about the history of the town and what happened there many years ago and frankly what was still happening to that day. I think that the pacing was a bit off at times. It was very slow at the beginning, but it did pick up as the story progressed. I do think that the ending was very abrupt and it definitely brought me out of the story, but it was an intriguing ending. So overall, I think that it was a great spooky read, perfect for around Halloween time, and I gave it a four out of five stars. And then the final book that I have is Ask Me Where I'm Going by Jasmine Carr. I gave this a 3.5 out of five stars. This is a book of poetry that is broken up into six sections. It follows a young woman who is escaping her trauma and moves to America as an undocumented immigrant. While in America, she gives birth and raises her daughter there. This book blends both poetry and images in a beautiful way. I read it in one sitting. It was really quick to read. My favorite parts were definitely the parts that followed the mother and daughter through their time in America. I almost wish that the whole book was following these characters. I was so drawn into their story within 20 pages. So I can only imagine how much I would have loved this if it had just been their narrative rather than mostly poetry. And that story is left on such a cliffhanger, like we have no idea what happened to Koran and her daughter, so it's just very upsetting to me because I want to know and I'm never going to know. But overall, I do think that this was a great poetry collection, but because I just wanted more of that damn story, I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars because I was left with so much yearning. Alright everybody, so those were the next five books that I read in the month of December for 2021. If you are interested in the other 10 books that I read. They will be linked down below in the other wrap-ups so you guys can check those out. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!